Good morning, everyone. Welcome for our worship at Westminster Presbyterian Church. This is our third Sunday in Advent. We are now halfway through the season of Advent, and while Advent can be a somber time, waiting as we do for the big celebration of Jesus' birth, this halfway point is an appropriate time for joy, joy that is rooted deeply in the love and grace of God that we know in Jesus Christ. Hear these verses from Isaiah 35, verses 1 through 4. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear, here is your God. God will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. the prisoner to release in safety. 
Our gospel reading this morning is verses from the first chapter of the gospel according to John, verses about John the Baptist and the work that he did of preparation. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today is the third Sunday of Advent and it is often called Pink Candle Sunday because it's the day we light the pink candle, which singularly goes, huh? Well, it is true that our preparatory season is half over. There are 25 days in Advent this year, and this is the 15th. So the pink candle is a lighter color candle and is lit to show our joy for having come this far maybe seems a little far-fetched to you, and that's okay. Joy seems a bit far-fetched some days. It's hard to come by, and it's even harder to believe that it is real. For some, life has been right difficult these Advent days, challenging unrest in many communities and neighborhoods. Relationships between people of all kinds of different backgrounds, just pick a category. Well, they're just not going very well in some places. We continue to argue and petition over all kinds of issues. An opinion on any issue often has a wide divergence of opinion. Another typhoon hit the Philippines on December 6th and thousands of people were displaced, at least temporarily. That story's already faded into the background as if it were nothing. Small earthquakes and tremors have led some to say that the earth is just a bit unsettled these days. And except for three families that I know personally who are expecting new babies, often there just doesn't seem to be much joy. But what is joy? Would it be happiness? Optimism? Does it come as a gift that we receive? Or is it something that we cultivate within ourselves? Now the Psalms talk a lot, so to speak, about joy, joyful, joyous, rejoice. Some 39, 40 plus times Joy comes in the morning, the psalm says, which is true, except on days when morning is as gloomy as the day before. Make a joyful noise to the Lord in several psalms, which is not too hard in a place like this. But sometimes it's just downright impossible in a doctor's waiting room. 
In the prophetic writings, the prophet Isaiah uses joy, joyful, joyous the most. Four times in chapter 35, which Jack read, the desert shall rejoice, rejoice with joy and singing. The tongue of the speechless, speechless will sing for joy. The ransomed of the Lord shall return. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain joy and gladness. But even with the encouragement of Scripture, joy some days remains elusive. For some, joy would be enough food for the day. Echoing the age-old petition, give us this day our daily bread. For others, joy would be a warm place to sleep. Or maybe something with clean, with all the buttons that worked that you could wear to a job interview. For some, it will be one of these wonderful quilts that we're fixing to give away. For some, retired ministers and missionaries, particularly who had small salaries during their active working years, joy is extra money that comes through the joy offering which we are making in these Advent days. Now, if this were a class discussion, we could each take turns talking about what joy would be for us. A conversation that would be based on the assumption that God's people ought to exhibit joy. After all, it is the second on the list that the Apostle Paul gives us of evidences of the work of the Spirit. Love is first. Joy is second. Now, joy isn't mentioned in the story about John the Baptist. He's in the wilderness where Advent begins. He's the one crying out for repentance, for getting ready for God, for God who is coming, for the God who would perhaps bring joy. But he himself does not exhibit great joy. What we do find joy in Luke's birth narrative the angel said unto the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. But still, Presbyterian minister and writer Frederick Beekner writes in a sermon to be a saint this description of a saint, a human being, a child of God. To be a saint is to work and weep for the broken and suffering of the world, but also to be strangely light of heart <coughs> in the knowledge that there is something greater than the world that mends and renews. Maybe more than anything else, to be a saint is to know joy. Not happiness that comes and goes with moments that occasion it, but joy. It is always there like an underground spring, no matter how dark and terrible the night. For a long time, I've been intrigued by this definition because it tells us that joy has a deep grounding, a permanence that is not affected by the ups and downs of human life, not destroyed by disease or wind or violence. It is as though we have a deep well within us, a space where there is joy. Joy that can rise up and nourish us and refresh us and encourage us. But how does that happen, you might say? Where would be the proclamation of joy in our lives? So if we take seriously the message of the prophet, joy comes... When God comes, the desert blooms when God comes. Now, I hope you have noticed each week the sanctuary is blossoming a little more. Maybe you didn't notice that the Christmas tree wasn't even on the first week of Advent. And trust me, wait till next week. Have you seen our dry riverbed? Watch carefully. 
There is more blossoming to come. Joy is a gift from God. It comes in the gift of Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, whose birth we are preparing to celebrate. And in this gift, we find joy. Joy is also something we can cultivate in our lives, just like other gifts. It's not useful unless we actually use it. So if you stick it in the bottom drawer or on the top shelf, you will not have joy. But it is a gift we can use. Walter Brueggemann, Old Testament scholar and prolific writer, writes this about what can happen in us when this gift is offered. The Jesus season, that's what he calls Christmas, the Jesus season for which we wait at Christmas is a season of wondrous healing, of unexplained newness, of free gifts that will let us live whole, joyous lives. So, the third Sunday of Advent, the pink candle Sunday, the we're halfway there Sunday, the joy Sunday, we stand in a world that is dark and broken in many places. But we hear the announcement that there is joy, joy that is coming, that we can receive joy, that we can have joy in our lives. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom, rejoicing with joy and singing. Here is your God. The Lord will come and save you. Everlasting joy will be upon your head. Thanks be to God. The Westminster Presbyterian Church is not particularly a big congregation. But we do have amazing members. And they have amazing talents. Most of which they're willing to share. So some of our amazing folks with amazing talents make quilts. And you see their work. 45, 21 adult size, 24 children size. Following worship, I hope you will walk the aisles looking at the amazing variety of the patterns. From the beginning, these quilts were made to be given away to families who are in a time of need at the Salvation Ar Army Family Center. We don't know these people. We don't know their names. We can imagine, but we do not know their circumstances. But we give them away because there is a need. Pray with me that we may ask God's blessing on the givers and the receivers. Holy Lord God, in these holy days, we remember how generous you are, giving of yourself to come and live with us and show us the depth of your love. Today, we are grateful for the labor and the generosity of some of our members, folks we know and care about. Thank you for their work. We also pray for your abundant mercy and grace to come into the lives of those who will receive these quilts. May they add warmth to combat cold. May they represent hope in a dark time. And may they bring some joy, joy in the face of difficult situations. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. He who gave everything. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>